When I skate, I feel free. It's so individualist that you own this piece of wood with wheels and you can create anything you want to on it, you know. The board is your brush and the skate park or the streets is your canvas. Technically speaking, I wouldn't say I'm a good skateboarder, but that's because I see all these people at the skate park with me doing like tray flips down the stairs or like backsmithing the rail. This is all stuff that I really, really want to learn how to do and I'm going to make sure that I do it. My name's Isaac Crawford and I think it's pretty safe to say I fucking love skateboarding. I'm 20 years old, originally from Winchester, but I'm currently living in Leeds. Um, I really enjoy travelling about the country, going to new places to skate, and being able to go to university in a different place in the country has really opened up massive avenues for skateboarding for me, such as in my university I've actually started my own skateboard society and have passed on my 10 years of experience of skateboarding onto people who are starting for the first time, which I really, really enjoy. I, I really enjoy the kind of punk sensibility that skateboarding has. So music is a, is a massive part of my life. I, I used to play trumpet, I play guitar at the moment. Um, punk music is a really big passion of mine and I, I really enjoy the aggression that skateboarding brings and you can really, really emphasise and put all your power into the tricks. Um, another thing I really like about skateboarding is the creativity involved in that it's so individualist that you own this piece of wood with wheels and you can create anything you want to on it, you know. The board is your brush and the skate park or the streets is your canvas. Another thing I really like about skateboarding is the fact that you can't cheat. It's not like football where you can pull fouls or, you know, uh, you, you break regulations to progress. There's, there's one way to learn it and you learn it that way and that's what I love about it. I think I was more inspired by the people that I skateboard with, my friends especially the older kids at the skate park, because they're really motivating for me to learn those tricks. And you learn by seeing, and by seeing them at the skate park, skating around is really how I've progressed. The first skateboard I ever had was actually from some random bloke in a pub car park. Right, that's a bit dodgy, let's not go into detail about that. But talking about buying one from a skate shop, I remember it was in Pool. I can't remember the name of the skate shop though, but it was this black enough deck with a question mark on it. I bought it as a complete, and it was the first time I ever had something that you know knew it was mine, and I fell in love with it. You know, I almost I almost slept with it, and I would tuck it up next to the bed at night, but just just not just not under the duvet, you know. And uh, it, unfortunately, that board didn't last very long. Um, it got it got run over by a car. And it, and it broke, and I, I cried for months. It was awful, and like I, I didn't know what to do. And for, unfortunately, like my friends wouldn't let me have their boards because it got too annoying. You know, can I use your board? Can I use your board? And, they, and in the end, they didn't even want to go out skateboarding with me because they're like, this, this guy's just gonna like grab our boards. So I like I, I begged, I begged my parents to buy me another skateboard because you know I'm only a little kid. I can't afford these things. And they're like, right, you've got to earn it, Isaac. You've got to earn it. I remember, I remember the next three weeks after that, the amount of gardening and cleaning that I had to do was horrendous. Like, I almost had no skin left on my hands, I was doing that much work. But eventually I saved up enough money and I managed to get this toy machine board, Leo Romero, who was, was another favourite skateboarder of mine. And it was so nice having this thing that I've earned and worked for. And I feel like, actually, that work ethic, that, the drive that skateboarding gave me, has actually helped me in jobs. I can relate to it now, you know. At the end of the at the end of the month, that paycheck, you know, I'm going to spend it on skateboards. It's always going to go on skateboards. I mean, I I knew a couple of the big skateboarders from like video games I used to play. So I used to like play a lot of skate. I mean, Tony Hawk's Underground. I used to play. So Tony Hawk, I could say, was a bit of an idol of mine. Uh, I really like this guy called Bob Burnquist. He has like this huge mega ramp in his uh, backyard that goes over the Grand Canyon. It's like absolutely crazy. I always used to be getting like, flabbergasted by that. But um, I'd say now, as my style's developed, my it, like, interest in skateboarders is kind of developed with it. I feel like these big names were so, like the mainstream attention they, they got was so intense compared to like Em Smith and skateboarders like that who I follow now. And I, I find that's because I've just got more involved with the sport. I used to really enjoy filming skateboarding and I used to watch so many skate films when I was growing up to try and perfect the style that they have because yeah, it's a very, it's a very like, um, a very unusual aesthetic that skateboard videos have. I mean, like you're, you're chasing guys, some guy around with a fisheye lens, you've got it shoving it up his butt basically. Like it doesn't happen in every other type of film. Um, 
at the moment, my favourite skate video is GX1000. I feel, I think the, the crazy hills in San Francisco that they skate are just absolutely insane. You know, these guys are off their rockers to even try any of that stuff, so I watch in absolute awe. Um, when I was younger though, I really liked Heroin Skateboards Life from Antarctica. Uh, that was actually the first skate DV I got, and it was a Christmas present in 2010, I think I got. It was from my mum, but I, I remember I, I watched that like every day, every day since I got that, and it was, it was perfect. I find that skateboarding as a whole bounces up and down in trends. So I'd say in you know, the 1980s, everyone was skating huge boards and they were skating pools. And say for the 90s, everyone was skating, skating these tiny popsicle boards and getting a lot more street. But I find that the kind of 80s, 70s skateboarding has come back in a big loop. Same with the fashion that skateboarders wear. Um, myself, I found that my skateboarding's evolved because I've gone through the different disciplines. So I remember when I first started skateboarding, I had there was nowhere good to skate near me. Um, I lived in a tiny village, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, all I had around me was hills, so I used to just skate down hills all the time, or the little curb outside my house. And, you know, it it was fun. It was fun for what it was, but I feel like maybe I, I could have learned more elsewhere. I remember when we uh, actually moved to Winchester, then it was like, wow, there's actually a couple street spots around. I mean, the, Winchester's not the best for street, street skateboarding, but I find that, you know, it, it was enough for what I was doing at the time. There was a, there were stair sets I was starting to do, I was trying to learn uh, flip tricks, and I actually had people to skateboard with, which was, which was amazing. Um, we had a skate park in Winchester at that time. It was a really, really old metal one. But the, uh, the council got together and we did a big fundraiser and we ended up actually raising enough money for the new skate park that's in Winchester now. Uh, an amazing, amazing skate park. And it's the first time Winchester's had a bowl or any of the surrounding areas have had a bowl. So then that uh, showed to me that, that there's a new discipline I could learn. So you know, I've been doing downhill, I've done a little bit of street, but what's this? Oh, it's bowl. I, I, I want to learn how to skate this thing. So uh, it took me a while to get used to it. I ended up actually having to change my, my setup I used to ride a 7.75, which is a fairly small deck, but now I'm riding a 8.5, which is slightly larger with bigger wheels, just because I've fallen in love with skating bowls and I love the way that you know you're cruising around it and it's glued to your feet and you've just could like you're flying like a bird around this thing. It's amazing. But moving forward from that, I still feel like there's so many more flip tricks that I can learn. As a, a, technically speaking, I wouldn't say I'm a good skateboarder. But that's because I see all these people at the skate park with me doing like tray flips down the stairs or like backsmith in the rail. This is all stuff that I really, really want to learn how to do and I'm going to make sure that I do it. So like I said, I've been skateboarding for 10 years, but as a skateboarder, I'm a really slow learner. So I'd say for the first four years of skateboarding, me and my friends we were probably all on the same par. But they all started learning flip tricks and skating a lot of street and I, I could just never get my head around it. And to add to that, I kept getting injured as well, um, predominantly my ankles, my left one, it's, it's made of glass, basically, I, I, I fuck it all the time. Um, but I can't really hide behind the injuries of the fact that I haven't progressed as much as my friends in the skateboarding, but I also find that because it's so individual, you can't all be the same, you know, we're not all robots, we are, we are individuals. Uh, well, yeah, ankles, wrists, elbows, knees, anything that really is sticking out at weird angles and poking out the place is like the first thing you hit when you hit the floor. Um, I've actually got uh, a little lump here where I've knocked the elbow so much now that the bone is starting to grow up across here. So this one, I mean, it's untreatable. It's, it's, it's starting to get look quite uh, creative. I might like draw a little face on it, like you know you used to do when you paint eggs when you were younger. But that, that, um, my ankles, I mean, to recover from them, I find a really good trick is to write your name uh, with your foot when you wake up in the morning. So I do it in capital letters, some lowercase letters, and that really helps like, to stretch your feet. I've also started taking up yoga recently to improve my flexibility. Um, I don't know whether this is just because I'm not as young as I used to be anymore, or that maybe I'm not actually that flexible, but I find it really helps me keep my balance when I'm skateboarding. But I wish I knew I had, I wish I had this knowledge beforehand before I injured my shoulder. You know, that was a bad day. I would love to tell you I was trying some crazy trick down some huge stair set. I was literally just rolling into the park, waving to my mates going, ah! hit stone, fell over, landed on my shoulder. Next thing you know, I've got my collarbone floating about like a convertible. And I'm going, what the hell? I had to sit there for a bit, figure out if I could actually drive to the hospital or not. But it, it turned out it was all right. Got myself there and spent the night in a &E. it, it was bad. It was really bad news from the doctors. I mean, it's, it's, it's a cosmetic injury, it, but that's what they called it. 
but it's so much more than that and he described the amount of pain I'd be feeling for the next years to come and it, it, it all mounted up to the point and he turned around to me and he said you're never going to get back to the board it, the, the injury of, like the risk of having more injury to your shoulder is 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 too intense when, you, when you're skateboarding I can't advise it I can't let you do it and he spoke to my mum and he actually turned around to my mum and said you don't let him out with the skateboard take the skateboard away you know this boy's going to really hurt himself it was it was quite quite a scary point because I, I love skateboarding it's all I've ever known and the fact I had this injury which will will be with me for life you know and the doc when the doctor told me that it was kind of like that was the first thing I thought I was like, I'm not going to skate and I remember I remember my mum was there in A and E when the doctor told me and she turned around to me and obviously worrying like oh, I'm going to take away your skateboard I'm not letting you hurt yourself anymore you don't look after yourself Isaac I was like I can't do that. No, I'm not me if I'm not skateboarding. I actually get depressed if I don't skate for like a week. So I'd say maybe like three months three months after the injury. I'd done a little bit of physio, nowhere near fully recovered, but I, I just made this makeshift brace out of this wetsuit material and I went to the park. You know, my friends were so happy when I arrived there. I was happy too. It was, it was a great day, but it, you know, Doctors aren't always right. Look, look where I am now. I'm still skating. I'm still fine. So if, if he's watching this, then uh, yeah. I'm scared. Scared is definitely the word. Well, anxious even because you think like, it's so easy to fall off. And when I fall off, I, I travel this way anyway. So I'm naturally going to fall onto the shoulder. So I had to teach myself how to fall, which was quite interesting. You know, get, being at the skate park and you see me fall off and everyone else just slaps and hit the ground, but I kind of go into this like reverse penguin and I slide across on my back like this. Um, so yeah, it was kind of scared that I didn't want to make it worse. But at the same time, I knew that it's all in your head. It's such a mental barrier that needed to be overcome so that I could really progress. And I found that from after my shoulder injury, I actually learned a lot quicker than I ever had before because I was more committed. When I skate, I feel free. Um, I'd say a dark, a dark time in my life was when my parents got divorced. Um, my little brother was still very, very young at the time, and I really, you know, I had to look after him. He, he, he didn't know what to do himself. I, I didn't know what I had to do myself, but I kind of had to guide him. And skateboarding was really the only relief I could ever have from this. You know, my family was breaking up. My little, bro little brother's in turmoil, but. When I was outside skateboarding, I could just forget about all of that. I could just focus on something and having that thing to focus on and the freedom to do whatever you want was the best feeling in the world. It's, it's why I would never give up skateboarding. It's, 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 I'm addicted. I'm a skateboard addict. I, I don't think I can ever stop. Oh yeah, my, well my first sponsor was actually quite a while ago. Um, I used to put a lot of videos and clips of me skating on Instagram. It was mainly kind of just to document what was going on because, you know, there was the times I really enjoyed it and I wanted to put it out there. Um, I got approached on online by Doom Youth Supply Co, a company in Liverpool, who said, oh, we'd be very happy to chuck you some merchandise if you wear it in your skate videos and promote us, up, us as a brand. So I did a couple shoots, did one at Stanmore Skate Park. Uh, my favourite photo from that's the uh, fakey ollie I did at the quarter there and like, my back foot's just kind of kicking off but my friend's in the background like on the phone pulling the funny face like, yeah. so I love that. Uh, I'd say something I'm really, really, really proud, proud of is uh, I've actually established a skateboard society at my university. So last year when I was in first year, there wasn't a skateboard society and we thought, uh, me and my weeks got together and we thought we should make one. Um, at the Freshers' Fair, we weren't allowed an official stall because we weren't actually recognised by the university. So we had a little table outside of the sports hall where all the uh, other sports teams and stuff were and we were giving out free chicken wings for everyone who would sign up. So we had loads and loads of people sign up only because they wanted free chicken wings and no one actually came to the skate society. So I'd say all through last year I slogged and I slogged doing you know, like social media pro like promotion, just trying to make people aware of skateboarding and we ended up, I'd say by the end of the year we gained about 20 members. Now this year, after working with the university last year, we're now officially recognised and we're on the website and we have uh, sessions at the it Work Skate Park in Leeds, which is an indoor park, every Tuesday. And it provides a really, really safe space for people who may be intimidated to go to their local skate park to come and skate. I, I coach sometimes, I, I'll tell you what though, like, I say I coach, I, I'm, I, I'm too excited to skate and I kind of like deviate from the coaching, but coaching is a big part of it for me. Um, it's really nice to see the amount of girls that are picking up skateboarding at the moment as well. I'd say 80% of our members at the Skate Society are girls who are starting for the first time and it's amazing to see because 
the gender gap in the sport is massive and I really feel like you know, skateboarding needs to get into the modern world and I want to see more girl skateboarders. Yeah, I see, I see myself in these people. Uh, I, see, I see myself when I first started skateboarding. Scared, don't know what to do, you know, am I in the way of people constantly just kind of just being anxious and it, I could come over to them and go, chill man, it's cool, you know, like, we're all here to have a good time. Skate, skateboarding is about having fun. That's what I think, and like that's what I try to instill in everything that we do in the society. Whether that be socials outside, when we go out for drinks, meeting up to go skate, doing trips, etc. You know, I I just want everyone to make sure they're having a good time. I'd I'd say out of all the things that skateboarding has given me that have benefited me, you know, the sponsorship, free clothes, uh, self confidence. I think that the highlight of my skateboarding journey is the fact that I found my girlfriend through skateboarding. Um, we, we met at the Skate Society, She's, she just started this year and I remember during the first session she was there, I, I couldn't take my eyes off her, it, it was crazy, like, I, I, I wasn't a believer in love at first sight but I, I really, really fell for her that day and uh, I, I remember just thinking when I got back from the Skate Society afterwards, like I've really, really got to go talk to her. So the following weeks uh, I slowly built up my confidence and I, I could tell there might be something there already because we kind of locked eyes a couple of times, it was fine. And, uh, I went over to her one day and I, I, she had some yellow grip tape and I thought that was really cool so I went over and I was like, I really like your grip tape. It was probably the worst conversation starter you could ever think of but it got the ball rolling. Uh, we got talking after that and it was fine. I remember it was only a little conversation but the next week we actually, I was coming down from the cafe at the top of the skate park around the stairs and coming around the corner with my friend I actually bump into her like this and we stop and we kind of like, we're stuck there for ages kind of like, like looking at each other and it was like, oh my god, what the hell is going on? She ran off up the stairs, I ran down the stairs and I turned my friend I was like, I'm secretly in love with her. So I, I, I managed, next week I went and spoke to her, I was like, please give me your number, let's please go out this weekend, are you free? And this, the rest is history. We go skate together, it's the best. Uh, having a skateboarder girlfriend is fucking wicked. I'm graduating university next year, so at the moment all my efforts are going into my studies. But I, I'm, a, I'm a management student and management is just not for me. You know, I spent all time in my lectures just dreaming about when I can leave that hellhole and get to the skate park. Um, so really, you know, it, point, it stands out so clearly to me that if I'm going to have a career, it's got to be with something to do with skateboarding. You know, I may not be a good enough skateboarder to actually go professional, even though I would really, really want to, but I feel like the artistic side that I, I like, you know, I like to do drawings and stuff like that, I can incorporate that into skateboarding. And uh, I've been making a couple t-shirt designs, board designs, and I really, really think in like, a couple years time after leaving university, I will be having my own pop-up shop, traveling the country, selling skateboards and clothing to skateboarders. It's crazy how much enjoyment I've had over the last decade pushing this plank of wood with wheels on around the world. Um, I, I've been doing it for half my life. It's such a big part of me and I really can't see the, my future, the rest of this journey, without skateboarding. I'd be absolutely lost without it and I owe it everything.